And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Ryan Metzler. Hey everyone, it's Ryan Metzler here, and today we're going to be taking a look at a game from Le Scorpion Mask called Quebec. This is a uh, two to five player game. Uh, it's going to play in about 60 to 90 minutes, and it's for ages about 13 up. Uh, but the game is a game about area control. You're trying to uh, contribute to different buildings in order to put cubes into different types of influence areas uh, in order to score points eventually. And these cubes will actually cascade down from the most important region to the less important regions, giving you more points as they cascade down. So it's best to be influential in the highest uh, thought of region and then take that influence down into the lower region, scoring more points. Uh, it's a little bit of a unique mechanic in this game, so now that I've given you that real brief overview, let's take a look at what's inside the box, how the game plays, and then I'll give you my final thoughts on it. So here you see everything that comes with Quebec. Uh, basically you have this nice colorful board. Uh, you have all of these little circular buildings here. These all represent buildings. You can see this one is blue and has a Roman numeral 3 at the top. This is a 3rd century building, and there's going to be 4 centuries, or 4 rounds in the game. Uh, the game is going to focus on building these different buildings during the appropriate areas. Uh, all of the first century buildings have these blue discs on them to note which ones are, are from the first century. And getting cubes, your workers, into different areas of influence. You have religious, political, economic, and culture areas of influence, one of which will be most important in each of the different centuries. Each player also has a set of cubes, which will be their workers. Uh, they'll start with three active workers, which is on this hand card, and a pool of uh, basically reserve workers, which they can get into their active zone, and one pawn, which represents their architect, which is going to allow them to control different buildings on the board, and control of buildings will be important for getting kind of a uh, area that you have built maximally that will score you bonus points at the end of the game. Uh, there's also going to be some leader cards. They look like this. These are only included in the slightly more advanced version of the game, not in the family version. Uh, but as an action on your turn, you'll be able to take one of these in order to get some type of special bonus for the remainder of the round. On a player's turn, they're going to be able to do one of four things. And they're going to go in turn order accomplishing these things until uh, one of these centuries ends and then there'll be a scoring phase. Centuries will end when one player is no longer able to move their architect from one building to another. Uh, one of these buildings that still has a blue disc on it. So essentially once all the blue discs are gone and somebody tries to take a move architect action, uh, the round is going to end and you're going to proceed to scoring. Now, on a player's turn, as I said, they can do one of four things. Um, these are going to be mainly just kind of contributing to these buildings and starting new buildings. So the first action would be to start a new building with your architect. And let's say Pink wants to start a new building. When they do so, they're going to take their worker, they'll place it out onto one of the buildings that has the blue discs on it, so in the first age it's going to be the one buildings, but in the second it would be the twos, the third, threes, and so forth. And they would place it out there, let's say they place it on this yellow one, take the blue disc off, and then they're going to be able to activate three of their workers, moving them from the reserve supply onto their card, having them activated. So now they have more workers to contribute to the board. The third action you can take on your turn is to send one of your workers into one of these zones of power, which I mentioned previously, but I left one out. There are actually five zones of power. There's the religion, the political, the economic, and the cultural, and then there's kind of this over-encompassing gray area here, which is the most, or the first scored zone of power in all of the games. It's going to be the place where you start, and then you're going to score the rest of them after that. Uh, but Essentially, this is a fifth place to place, and you could simply take one of your workers and place it into any of these areas. Now, this is going to be a rare scenario because most of the time it's better to place your workers out on the board because you can place more of them, as I showed you previously, and then later they'll get distributed in here. But if you're really fighting for control of one of these regions, you may want to place a worker directly in there to break a tie. The fourth action you can take on your turn is to take one of these leader cards from the side of the board here. Uh, there's going to be a bunch of them, but essentially what they're going to do is they're going to give you some type of special ability for the rest of the age. This is the yellow one, and it would allow you to have the neutral uh, architect on the board. So essentially you would control two buildings at the same time. Uh, and that would let you essentially get more of an uh, area of control for that extra scoring at the end of game that I mentioned. But when you take one of these, you're simply going to basically skip the rest of your turn and take one of these cards and put it in front of you. Now it's better to wait longer, which means you may not get the leader that you want, because each time somebody takes a card, 
uh, they're going to activate a number of workers equal to the number of leaders already taken. So in this case, none have been taken. If I take one, I'm not going to get to activate any workers. But if I were the third person, meaning the two cards had already been taken, I would activate two of my workers and put them on my card and take my leader. So it's better to wait longer, but you may not get what you need. Now, as I said, players are going to be contributing to buildings. So let's say pink put some stuff out here, uh, and then orange put some more out and they finish this building, but it doesn't flip yet. It will flip when pink moves away. So once they take a start, a new building action. When, on a player's turn, they want to move their architect, whether or not the building is full of cubes, so this situation could be that these two spots are full and the third one is not, they can simply move their architect to a new building that has not yet been started, one with a blue disc, take all of the, uh, the cubes from the building they just completed and put them onto the appropriate area of influence, flip over the building, and get three new cubes onto their board. Additionally, they're going to place out one of their markers, these little markers that I showed you earlier, like this, with the stars on them. This one says one, on the other side it says six. Uh, but the important part is the number of stars on it. You're going to want to place one with the number of stars equal to the number of contributed spots on the building you just finished. So, for example, that building had two spots contributed to it. You'll want to put out one of the two star spots. So this would go onto the appropriate building, marking that it had two contributions when it was done. At the end of the game, these will contribute bonus victory points to your score. So the game's going to keep going in this manner until one of two things happens. Either a player's going to try and start a new building for the current century, and there's not going to be any buildings left with blue discs on it, or one player is going to have no more workers in front of them at the start of their turn, and that would go into a scoring phase. And scoring phases are going to go as follows. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to score all of the zones of power on the board, starting always with the gray one, and then moving down in importance of which one is the most important for that area. So starting with uh, religion in the first era, then political in the next, then economy, then culture. And you're going to look at who has the most cubes in an area, and they're going to score one point for each cube. Actually, everyone's going to score one point for each cube. So orange would get three, and pink two, white one. Now, the important part of the game, and this only happens in the uh, advanced game, not the family version, but that's all I'm going to cover here, is that half of these person's cubes, the person with the most cubes, is going to cascade to, down to the next most important area. They would round uh, down, so only one cube is going to go in this case. And the other ones would be returned to the player's supplies. Now you're going to score the next area, and you can see in the next area, pink is the uh, most influential. They have the most workers, and they would score four points. White would score one point and orange would score three. But now, pink has the most cubes, and they're going to cascade half of their cubes down to the next most influential area, and the rest of these would be returned. In the next area, you can see pink is a dominant force, and they have the most points again. They would score six, orange three, and white two, but then half of this player's cubes, which is going to be three, cascade to the next area, in which they'll be the most powerful again and score the most points, and half of their cubes cascade down, and then you would score the final region. So you can see it's important to have the most cubes in the most influential area and cascade those down to get even more points. After this, you would start a new round by placing all of the blue discs out on the level two building. So we'd go to the second century, placing out blue discs, and those buildings would be available to build. If the round had ended previously with somebody trying to move to a new building, they would choose a new building to move to, activate their three workers, and then it would be the next player's turn. You're going to play in this manner until you've gone through all four rounds. And then at the end of the game, you're going to do one more special scoring. At the end of the game, players are going to get one victory point for each of their workers left on an incomplete building, so a building that hasn't been moved off of. Uh, one point for each two workers he has left on his card. And then you're going to get points for uh, groups of buildings that you have made. So I pointed out these star tokens earlier. And you're going to find the group of buildings that you have uh, built, and you're going to find the largest connected group of buildings. And for that group, you're going to score points equal to the numbers at the bottom of these tokens. So, as I said, the one with two stars, meaning that two parts of the building had been completed, you would get three points, and then this one next to it would be worth six points, and you would add up all of those and you'd get that many points. For each of your smaller areas, areas that aren't your largest, you're only going to get the stars on the token. So you'll see that this three-point token is actually only worth two stars, so you'd only get two points for buildings that aren't connected to your largest group. Whoever has the most points at the end of the game is going to win. 
In addition to all of this, there are event cards that come with the game. And the event cards are going to be things that you can use in a more advanced version of the game that will change how the game plays every time. For example, we have the Summit of the Americas and the Protest Against Globalization card. It looks like this, and this would be a card revealed in the fourth era, but it's just an example. And what it says is that during this century scoring round, a player can only cascade into a zone where they already have at least one workers. So that cascading you just saw, if you didn't have a worker in an area, you couldn't cascade down to it. So that kind of changes the strategy a little bit, making sure that you have workers in all of the zones in order to cascade more appropriately. So that's Quebec, uh, a really nice, uh, relatively light to medium weight Euro game, uh, and kind of one that has a very interesting scoring mechanic. I really like the cascading from the most important area down, uh, but it makes it very, very important to focus on those higher level areas, uh, to use the ability on the boards that I didn't really go into to get workers into that gray zone uh, that scores first every time and then cascade down. Uh, the abilities are different on each of the spots, but they're all relatively related to placing workers, or moving workers, or doing some special things with your, your architect, or different things like that. They all just kind of modify the game in small little ways. Some of them let you flip those star tokens to the next most powerful star spot in order to get more points at the end of the game. So there's a lot of strategy in choosing the right areas to play, the right buildings to control in order to uh, kind of get players to go there to contribute cubes to get you the higher scoring areas at the end of the game, but to contribute to other players' ways in order to use the actions the most appropriately. So I'd say that Quebec is a very nice, very uh, well-designed and very interesting Euro game, especially for those players out there who kind of like new ideas in their games, different little uh, quirks to games to try and explore, and just kind of looking for something new to add to their collection. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summer, and you've been watching what? The Dice Tower.